much, Rosanna Galadon. Thank you. Good afternoon. You may have to turn down. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes, what a difference. Yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate DCSRA for the, for the wonderful and welcome and invitation. And I thank all of you for being here to spend a Saturday afternoon. I'm going to um, go ahead and I'm going to start with a, a few of my talking points and then I'm going to um, actually focus on, on things that were done by the caucus as well as myself. So, I, um, you know, the budget had some positive um, steps and it was including more money for the classroom, additional pay increases for teachers, money for school uh, counselors, modest uh, additional investment in the housing trust fund, and unfreezing of kids' care, health insurance enrollment. But the Democrats, we held strong with several of the of the Republican budget um, holdouts, and the state and the Senate Democrats to ensure that these priorities were were addressed at least in part. But unfortunately, they were not actually addressed um, in a way that we, as as um, House Democrats, agreed. So uh, we voted against the budget. It was it was something we stuck together, and the budget was approved, uh, but it was by party lines. And uh, but just. Uh, the Republicans just put too many poison pills in there for, for me to actually vote for the budget in good conscience. Um, you know, there was um, $346 million to uh, tax credits, permanent tax credits, uh, tax cuts, excuse me. And the thing is, is, is we are, we're sitting on a billion dollars in the rainy day fund, as, as um, Representative Hernandez has indicated. So the thing is, is, is there are, there's things that we could do as a state to actually kind of put, um, not completely heal, but put some band-aids on, on things that really need to be addressed. And so, um, also I couldn't support a, a budget that uh, strikes back against the teachers for Red for Red. Even though teachers um, we get, uh, were, were able, we were able to give some money to the teachers, it just was not enough. We at the state of Arizona, we, we have not done enough in my opinion to really look at public education. Public education to me is not just K through 12, it's very, very important, but we're talking about our universities, our j -tets, our early childhood development, and on our community colleges. So that was very, very important. Um, the one thing that we did as, as House Democrats was we developed a responsible and balanced budget, but uh, we were not brought, our leadership was not brought into the negotiations with, with the leaderships of uh, the House and the Senate the Republicans. And so our caucus found ways to do more for the priorities that Arizona has told us over and over again to address. So I'm gonna list some of them, and then I'm going to uh, actually talk about them, some, uh, two of them in depth, is water sustainability and treatment of contamination, our crumbling schools, our roads and bridges that are falling apart, the crisis of homelessness in our communities, a better services for the most vulnerable in our communities. Um, the thing is, is, is um, we as a state, we continue to give tax cuts, tax credits, and, and what, that, what that does is it just brings less and less revenue. And so, in my opinion, that, that's unfortunate that we as a state, we continue to do that. But we as Democrats in the Senate and the House, we are fighting back and we're pushing back. And what's really wonderful is that all of you are pushing back as well. And, and the governor and the leadership uh, with our colleagues across the aisle are hearing that are hearing that enough is enough. And, and the thing is, is we need to continue to do that. We need to continue to push back, not only as Democrats, but all the citizens of the state of Arizona. So, so one of the things that, that um, the state, um, our schools, our, and again, this is our state doing this, is our schools will remain among the poorest funded in the country, and still is not cut up to funding the state, had a decade before the recession. Our roads and bridges will fall apart and further uh, dis disrepair. Affordable housing will become harder to find. That's the one thing is, is not only in the state of Arizona, but across our company, uh, country, is we're looking at people are, are not being able to afford to live mm -hmm. in, in, in their residence. They can't find something that's affordable. Um, I can. I can attest to that. Trying to find an apartment in, in Phoenix is very difficult. You know, the the um, the rent is very high, and I and I and I can I, I I have mileage, and I have I have a per diem. But these individuals that are working two jobs, that are trying to raise their family, they can't find affordable housing, and that more working moms will have to leave their jobs because they can't afford childcare. 
You know, we, we as a state, we keep taking away child care subsidies where families that want to go to work cannot go to work because they have to stay home with their children or, you know, and what's so unfortunate is we have the problem of neglect, neglect, where people are saying, I have to go to work, and they're leaving their children at home alone, and that's so important. So anyway, I um, wanted to address two of the things that I brought up, and one of them is water, is, uh, water sustainability and the treatment of, of water contamination. I actually was, it was such an honor and a privilege to actually serve on the steering committee of the Drug Contingency Plan. And that was a step in the right direction. This was something, but it was just a teeny weeny little step to what the state of Arizona needs to look at when it comes to water sustainability. Actually attended a phone call um, this, this last week to actually, they're gonna talk about what's called the management plans. And part of the, the state of Arizona, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go in the weeds just for a moment, is, is that we have what's called active management areas, and there's five of them in the state of Arizona. But what's happening is the state of Arizona is not looking at outside of what's called the AMAs. And that is something that's, that has been brought up over and over again, not just by the Democrats, but by the Republicans. And I, it, was very, uh, it was very refreshing that we had some of our colleagues from across the aisle that actually were, we were able to kill some really bad water bills. Bills that would have uh, made water a commodity. Bills that would, would have um, done more to, to um, uh, the pumping of, over pumping of, of our groundwater. And so those are the kind of things where we have to continue as a state to look at. And we are so behind the eight ball when it comes to our management plans. We, are, we really do need to address that. 2007 was the last time we had a management plan. Now, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that, uh, actually there, there's, there's two AMAs that are really um, uh, up, you know, that have really are up to the, the management plan, and one of them is Tucson, the Tucson AMA, which we are in, ladies and gentlemen, because they have planned, they have worked together, and they have come together. The one that I wanna talk about is Pinal, the Pinal AMA, where through the drought contingency plan, the DCP, Pinal County said we need $20 million so that we can continue to over pump those aquifers. And the thing is, is that's very unfortunate because they did not get their way through the drought contingency plan. Mm -hmm. And it, it was put in the budget. It was put into the budget with the promise that they were gonna pay it back. But what, I, what I'm fearful for, and I'm, and I'm very doubtful, this is my seventh year at the legislature, mm -hmm. is that they're going to change that so that they won't have to pay back the $20 million, mm -hmm. which they're supposed to get from the feds. So that's unfortunate. So again, um, I would love to talk to each and every one of you when it comes to, to water sustainability. Now when it comes to contamination, every year I introduce legislation for what's called WARP, which is the Water Quality Assurance Revolving Fund. And what that does is that's our watchdog when it comes to contamination with the orphaned, orphan areas. What I mean by orphan areas is where um, there's a contamination. For example, um, some corporation comes, they contaminate, our, our land, and then they go away to go out of business, and so there isn't those, that deep pocket of people that can actually pay for the mitigation of this contamination. So what WARP is, is very, very important. So the governor, opening day, said, oh, I'm gonna put $15 million into WARP, and I applauded that. But that $15 million is coming from fees. It's not coming from the state of Arizona, and so what, was, what, what I'm, what, what I, I think that is, is actually what it's doing is taking money away from the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality that they cannot go out and do their job because they're, they're not gonna have the funding to go clean up those contamination areas. Uh, so what I did was I actually did, a, I, I introduced a bill for $20 million from the general funds into WARP. And I have to say, I was very surprised, but uh, the chairman of the Natural Resources and Energy um, committee actually heard my bill and it actually passed. Good. And then, it, but it went into appropriations and got killed. <laughs> but the thing is, is it's one thing that it was actually been, and she, and I have to say, when we had a conversation with Representative Griffin Knight, she, un she understands that. Mm -hmm. But I believe that she knew it was gonna be, it was gonna be killed in appropriations. So again, it was like, oh, I'm being nice to you. But again, uh, I, I'm glad, <coughs> but I'm glad that she did that because she recognized the need for funding to ADEQ, uh, ADEQ, okay? So 
So I'm, I'm very proud of that. Also what I did for water sustainability is I asked for $6 million for hydrologists for the Arizona Department of Water Resources. Because right now, again, we don't know where the water is being pumped. We don't know what, 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 how much, how much uh, wells are being pumped, especially the, these, uh, it's called exempt wells. We need to have those hydrologists to go out and actually meter them, actually look at how much water that is being pumped. Because we don't know. We, at, through the state of Arizona, we really don't know what is being pumped and what isn't. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that I want to talk about with water is, is actually um, along with um, Representative um, Engel uh, and Representative Campbell and others, uh, bipartisan, we actually addressed what is called the water court. We were actually going to, I think it was going to be like $600,000 and we could actually get a judge. We could actually get a bailiff, a clerk, and actually to be able to look at adjudications that are happening throughout the state of Arizona. Who has the rights to pump? What define what's called surface water? Um, and, and so those are the kind of things where, where um, we as, and we were trying to put it in the budget, but it didn't happen. But we're gonna, uh, through, through the interim, we're gonna talk about that. So the next thing I wanna talk about is, is uh, transportation and our roads. I actually had a, I had a, I had a visit from, from the, the American Association of Civil, Civil Engineers. And what they told me was is that um, the state of Arizona, when it comes to the, the condition of our roads, our bridges, or anything that's in our infrastructure, we're getting C's and D's, okay? There is certain roads in the state of Arizona that have not been looked at or maintained in 50, years and so that is so transportation and infrastructure is very very important so through so that is something I just want to kind of uh, share that with you and kind of let, let that kind of settle with you in that regards because we as a state of Arizona we need to push back in regards to what's called HERP which is the highway user revenue funds because we keep sweeping that we, we pay the Department of Public Safety with with her money and the thing is, is we have to continue to, to, look, to look at that and, and put it back to just her. Just to give it back to the, to the counties and the municipalities to actually look at, at repairing our roads. It's very, very important. We, municipalities and counties keep coming back to us taxpayers to sit there and say, hey, you wanna, you wanna repair our, 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 our potholes? We need to cough up the money. So we're taxing you continuously. And when the state of Arizona can step up, and we're not gonna solve uh, every problem, but we can step up and say, we need to put more money into our infrastructure. Very, very important. I'm very happy that, that uh, the, the state and federal funding has, is going to, to um, um, Mariposa Road, State Route 189. So that's gonna be a bypass. So trucks from the port of entry are gonna go directly onto I-19 as opposed to going to, onto the Mariposa Road. Very, very important. Also through the transportation co committee, um, which I serve on, is we actually did distractive driving. That we had, we had, um, um, you know, a, a bill where it was, um, you know, hands-free, but distractive driving is very, very important. And it's gonna go in effect, like, I believe, in 2021. But that was a piece of legislation that was bipartisan, and I have to say that it was a good thing. And, and it was led for many, many years by, by former Senator Farley. And finally, we were able to do that, and it was, and the governor, you know, had, you know, had the signing, and I have to tell you, it was a really good thing, because what's happening, ladies and gentlemen, is people are dying, and this is going to save lives. So speaking about saving lives, I actually had a bill that I have, I have introduced over several years, and actually I had, Governor Ducey actually signed my bill. HB 2532 was actually signed into law. And, and, and why I want to share this with you is, is because it's called Critical Healthcare Emergency Responders, and that is something that's going to save lives as well. It's a permissive program where municipalities and counties can have people sign on to the program, and you put a decal on your card to indicate to first responders that there's critical health care information in the glove compartment. And um, but it, there's some, some more work to be done. But I have to say that it was a bipartisanship effort. When I went 
to the Senate President Fan, and and she says, you know, I've been I've been supporting this for the years. I, I'm wondering why it never got through. I said, I said, President Fan, I really need your help, and she really stepped up. She really stepped up, and and the thing is, is the very last day that we were there in session, I was able that that they finally put it on the agenda. They put it on the my bill four times, and they, we finally wow. <laughs> fourth time we voted for for what was called the final read, and we were able to to to, do, to actually pass, you know, to actually get that to the governor's desk. So I'm very honored and very proud. Um, thank you to my caucus, and to and to actually my the members from across the aisle, because that final vote was 60 to zero. Mm -hmm. It passed unanimously. Wow. So I'm very very proud of that. Yeah. So um, I, also I want to um, talk about about how um, we as, as a caucus and, and going to share s some more information and, and kind, of, uh, um, kind of add on to what Representative Hernandez said is, is 3129 and how disappointing it was to go to work, to do the people's work mm -hmm. and do prayer and pledge and then, and then we went home mm -hmm. because one of their members was not there. Mm -hmm. That was so unfortunate mm -hmm. and, and for our leadership, to, to not be heard, to not have those meetings, was, was very, I, I was very disappointing to me. And, I'm, and I have to tell you, I was um, sad about that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is we, 29 Democrats, I wanna repeat that, 29 Democrats, we held strong, we held together, and we were able to really kill, kill some really bad bills and we were able to pass some really good bad bills. And with the 700 plus bills that were actually introduced in the House, and I think, I think less than 300 got to, to the governor's desk, and I have to say, between the, the Senate and the House, only nine Democratic bills were signed. Oh my Ooh. God. So ladies and gentlemen, we need to change that. We need to do something about that. So I, I'm, I'm just very pleased and I'm very happy that, that um, I'm there representing you. Wow. It is such an honor and it's such a privilege to be your voice and to be the voice of the state of Arizona and to be and to be a public servant is something that, that I treasure and I feel very and I feel very honored and grateful and delighted <laughs> that I serve with these two individuals that are sitting next to me because we make a really good team. And we need to continue. We need to continue to, to serve with you. So please keep that in mind when we go and we ask for your support this coming this coming election. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm very happy to, to talk with you. I'm very pleased to, to to see all of you, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Questions? Yes. I'm probably sounding naive, but why did it take so long for the distracted driving law to go into effect? It seems so common sense, mm -hmm. yeah. and, but it took years. Yes, um, <laughs> your question is regarding how, why it took so long to get the distracted driving, um, actually legislation to go through. And, 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 I, and I believe it was, it was uh, kind of ideology, and that's my personal opinion, ideology and, and, and the sense of, of I, um, there, it was being pushed by a, a, a Democrat, even though there was support. I knew there was support throughout the years, but it took a long time for it actually to get to the finish line when, when, when families actually started coming in and saying, this is what happened to my child, this is what happened to my spouse, my family member, my friend. And so um, when it was actually um, introduced into the transportation, when it was heard in the transportation committee, which I serve on, I, um, it, it was very heart-wrenching and, and because people were actually talking about the law, you know, the, the officer that was actually killed. So why it took so long, yeah. I, my personal opinion is because of ideology and it, it wasn't important enough, I think, back then. And that was just my personal opinion. But I... And just why is it not going to effect until 2021? Uh, 
uh, the question was, is why we wouldn't, it's not going to go into effect until 2021. That was my understanding. That was part of the, legis the legislature, uh, the, the part of the, the bill. Uh, and so my understanding is, beca is because it's going to take time, I guess, to... For people to attack. I guess. <laughs> I guess. And, and, and the thing is, that can, hopefully that can change. Hopefully we can change that through, through legislation. It was Claudette. Yeah. Um, I, I sort of was, I was listening to you and I sort of stopped. Um, because my head started getting really concerned <clears throat> about why it is no one, that no one knows who's pumping water, who should pump water, how much water they pump. I mean, this is a yeah. serious issue in yes. Arizona. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 yes. Yes. and and the question is, 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 is your concern regarding uh, the overpumping, or if there is overpumping, and well, where there's water, where there's not? I mean, it's pretty hard to say there whether there is or isn't overpumping when you don't know how much is being pumped by who and if you should Sorry. anyway. I guess I want to know how corrupt is it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> the question is, 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 Claudette wants to know if it's corrupt. I don't believe it's corrupt. Good. I believe it's, it, we're just behind in regards to addressing those the water sustainability. I believe that ADW, ADW, Arizona Department of Water Resources is doing their best. But again, I go back to underfunding. They don't have... They don't have the, the staff to actually go and do the things. I'll give you a good example of that. Is I asked for how much is being pumped with, with exempt wells in the active management areas, and it took them over a year to get me that, that information. So, and, and the thing is, is because there was other things that were happening that, were more, that I believe were more important. This, and I know, it's, uh, um, you know the pumping of exempt wells is important as well. But the thing is, is right now, the state of Arizona is addressing that. We are going to have new management plans. We are going to address groundwater. We're going to find out what, you know, um, how to what is surface water, you know, what is, what is air, everything else. And that is something, because that is very, very important. So I, the reason, and, and thank you very much for your concern, but the thing is, is right now, we, not only Democrats, but our colleagues from across the aisle are saying this is so important. Right. There was a piece of legislation that actually Representative Cobb introduced actually to find out how many wells have been drilled. And so those are, those are the, kind of, and, and we are going to continue to look at bipartisan bills that address water sustainability and those will be, those will be addressed um, through the intro. Yeah. And then a bipartisan uh, study group. And there are standards that already exist yes. to identify what is sustainable and what is not sustainable. So that, that's already in place, right? That is correct. Uh, Arizona Department of Water Resources does have those reports. They do know where it's being pumped. But at the, but the end of the day, um, what needs to be done is that information needs to be put into management plans, okay. and which we are working on because I just attended a meeting. Good. Thank you very much. It was important. Yes, yes sir. Do drillers have to have a permit either from the, uh, the state, the county, or the municipality before they can drill? The question is, is, is if anybody wants to drill a well, they have to, if they need to get a permit. Every well that is drilled in the state of Arizona is required to get a permit through the Arizona Department of Water Resources. In addition to that, is there provisions for metering that well once it's drilled, and and you and the question is 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 if we can meter existing wells or, or future wells, and that oh. is con oh. and that is very controversial. Metering is a bad word at the legislature with certain 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 members of the legislature, and so so metering is something that that. Um, and one of the things that at ADWR says is they can they can look at, at how much ele electricity so you know that the the well, the well is using and then they can base it on how much water is being pumped. Uh, but you, if you go up if, if you if you're using solar power to pump your your well water, then you know uh, if I, if I may if I may can you and I we get together and I can sure. answer I can try to answer all the questions that, that you have, sir. Thank you, I appreciate that. Hi. I am. I have about three issues, but I'll start with one. My first one is the Rosemont Mine. I live in East Arica. I have an acre. I co-own a well with four other parties. A well, more managers have signed over a well to the Rosemont Corporation. I'm not very happy about that. 
the basically they're saying that they will maintain the well, but if anything major goes wrong with it, they won't fix it, but they own it now. Now, is there anything in place to help protect us well owners in that area when our wells become contaminated from the mine? The question is regarding the Rosemont proposed Rosemont copper mine and and the and the drilling of, of wells. Is that do I understand your question correctly? No. Basically, Rosemont uh, through an attorney action a few years ago, basically they came up with contracts and they are having all the well owners in the valley sign these up. They basically own our wells now. Wow. Cool. Uh, the maintenance. Uh, yeah. Let me, if, if I may, um, your concern is regarding uh, the ownership of the wells, and and I have to tell you, as a as a state legislature, that is between the well owner and Rosemont Copper, and and the thing is is is, but we as a state of Arizona can look at future drilling of uh, uh, wells for mining. We're yeah, basing it on the 1872 mining yeah. law. Okay. So those, so yes, we we as a state we can address that. But when your concern, you, you you'll need to speak to your attorney or or uh, because that uh, my understanding is that those are personal contracts between the well owner and the proposed mine. I was just making sure you guys were aware of that because we were kind of saying bad into it. So um, don't mean to hop the floor. But second concern, I'm on the Sonora and Border group. And are you are you talking about uh, I-11? No. That's why it's so confusing for everybody. Everybody thinks the I-11 and the Sonoran Corridor are the same thing. They're not. The I-11 is the one that's coming down from Phoenix on the National Highway. Sonoran Corridor, they want to come off of the L-12 ramp, which doesn't exist right now, and they want to come through Sarita and destroy East Sarita. They want to take out about a couple hundred homes in my area for this freeway bypass. Mm. Uh, your question is regarding that the proposed Sonoran corridor and 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 and, and uh, the 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 plan I guess that ADOT has has come up with that they've been working on ooh, since I was on Sorry the town council so you're talking maybe 2007 2009 and that they were asking for citizens input for many many years and I hope that she did comment on that and that she oh, did I'm share sure. your concerns <laughs> good but but the final decision was actually made. Um, you know, by AJOT and stakeholders in, in that regard. And why I bring up the I-11 is because when you, we talk about the Sonoran Corridor, they're talking about actually having those trucks actually bypass I-19 and get uh, quicker onto I-10. So that's why, that's the only reason why I bought the, the I-11. But one point is, East Sarita is not considered part of the town of Sarita. And one of the biggest problems I'm running into when I speak with the town council and everybody is they're like, oh, you're not in our district. Excuse me, you guys offered a uh, land. They went to be planning on Did, did you talk to Pima County? Because that's Pima County, correct. And Pima County, I guess, had, no, also had right input. Town Council offered. Yeah, Pima we're going we're to have to cut that off. Project. We'll talk later. You can we'll talk, talk with her personally you. later Thank if you, you want to. That. But we're going we're to have to move. Nan, do you have a quick question? Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear her talk about uh, recognition of water professionals that she's been done. Thank you. thank you, and I'm so thank you, Matt, for, for bringing yeah. that up. Actually, I had the, a House resolution, uh, 2002, that actually recognized water professionals, um, the, uh, the Arizona water professionals, and it was actually signed by the Secretary of State because uh, water professionals are not recognized, and those are not only just your water operators, but your engineers, your hydrologists, your uh, anything that has to do with with water, maybe water and wastewater. And so what I did was I took a, they actually, it was a week in April and I, and I took time to actually recognize the water professionals throughout the state of Arizona and, and it, was a, it was such an honor. Thank you, Nan, for, for reminding me of that. And we're gonna do it again in April of next year. Thank okay, you. thank you very much.